A good wireless follow focus is a great addition to anyone's kit. For a dedicated focus puller, which lets the camera operator focus more on framing, or for using the camera on something like a slider, where you can't physically pull focus yourself. Or even just for a handheld rig, but allowing you to get a more solid grip and take your hand off of the lens. Even when using something like a halo rig, for example, this can still help you to pull focus when you're holding that as well. So PD Movie sent me their Live Air 2 kit, and I've actually been really, really impressed with it in its simplicity, but still solid performance, and I want to talk to you about it just a bit today. The design, use, and included accessories have all been really, really perfect, even with a simpler, smaller rig. So, let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing for more no-nonsense tutorials and reviews. So first of all, let's take a quick look at what you get. You get a nice but sort of temporary foam case. I myself put that inside of a hard case that I got on Amazon to make it more long-term and transport friendly but this does have space for absolutely everything in a compact size, except for that included 15 millimeter rod, which does sit on the outside of the case in the original box. You get the motor and a relatively tiny little controller, of course. Uh, they do have kits with larger controllers, but this is a small one, which has a clamp on it for attaching uh, somewhere on your focus puller monitor setup, for example, on a tripod arm, a gimbal cage, or just wherever else. We'll get into the details of how these work more in a minute, both the motor and the controller have uh, removable batteries, which are of course included. And I think that's a good design because a dead battery doesn't have to mean a useless kit. Of course, if you have a replacement and luckily the motor does come with two batteries. So you're ready to go from the get go, swapping those batteries out. And there is also a dual charger included, which is weirdly nice quality with a nice kind of rubbery feeling to it instead of that cheap plastic feeling that I've come to expect from extra little accessories like that. You also then get a cable to charge the controller's battery right inside of the controller via USB. And while we're on the topic of batteries, battery life of the controller is about eight to 10 hours and it can actually recharge in under 30 minutes, which is incredible. And then each of the batteries for the motor should last about six to eight hours, and those can recharge in 1.5. Basically, battery life is really good, and altogether, this kit is more than ready to go for a full long production day. Finally, you get what's unexpectedly my favorite part of the kit. It's a really nice single rod mounting clamp that can use a cold shoe mount either right on your camera for a no cage type rig or on a cage like this one for the A7S III. I'm not sure that I'd feel comfortable with the torque on the camera's hot shoe, but either way, it's great for keeping a compact rig and it can also screw onto your rig if you need it to, but that screw is not included. But unlike a lot of similar single rod mounts that uh, require you to have a mounting point often with anti-twist pins so it doesn't spin and you then have to dig out a tool to attach and remove it, this whole setup is completely toolless, which makes rigging faster and easier, and I love that. Plus, it's worth mentioning here that something about the screw knobs on both the rod mount and on the motor itself, which are basically identical, feels really, really smooth and high quality. Anyway, enough of what's in the box. <laughs> we'll go over a few quick points here that were just in the order of my first impressions when I took this out and used it for the first time, and then, of course, updated with my long-term thoughts. First up, a simple one that kind of tripped me up at first. Uh, the batteries for the motor seem to go in facing either direction and then to get them out, you can just kind of push them to the side a little bit and then they will slide out easier. And then when you put a battery into the motor, it will automatically turn on, but the power button on the controller works just as you'd expect. There are minimal controls on this kit and everything is done through some combination of short and long pushes on the one single button. That can take a little time to get used to or memorize, uh, and that's the one drawback, but they do have a little kind of diagram on both the motor and on the controller that will uh, remind you of all the key functions. Anyway, after you turn on the controller and the motor, they pair easy enough, and they even repair if you go out of range and then come back. And this does have a pretty impressive 100 meter range, but if you are disconnected for some reason and need to activate that Bluetooth again, Three short and one long push will activate that and you can use that to pair these or also to pair the motor with the mobile app, which we'll talk about in a second. Going over more controls, one short then long push on either the controller or the motor will automatically calibrate it to find the start and end points of your lens. 
or you can do that manually by turning it and holding it at the start and end point for a half second each, which is especially useful if you have a lens without hard stops for the motor to automatically sense, like a photo lens, for example. In either case, doing this will ensure that one full turn of the controller wheel translates to one full turn of the lens. Then, of course, you can set temporary A and B points in your focus range for more accurate focus throws between just two preset and pre-measured points. So just move to point A, push the button once, move to point A, push it again, and then you're good to go. Now one full turn of the wheel on the controller will go from A to B instead of the full range of your lenses. And it seems very accurate of course repeatable with no misalignment coming from changing your speed or any other weirdness that you would obviously not want or expect. Push the button once again to cancel that and go back to the full range of your lens's focus throw. You can set all of this up in the mobile app too, which we'll talk about again in just a minute. The feel of this wheel on the controller, uh, although it is a little bit small, it's nice and smooth, it's well damped with a good enough weight to it, uh, but not too much. The movement isn't jumpy, of course, and even very detailed small adjustments seem to translate very well to the motor uh, and without any noticeable lag or awkwardness. Plus, starts and stops are just smooth enough to be nice and not jarring, yet they don't lag behind your actual movements either, unless you go really, really fast. Basically, it feels like a very natural movement, despite the fact that it is wireless, and that's exactly how it should be. And yes, I did mention a mobile app, and it's actually really pretty cool. Just turn on the motor and activate the Bluetooth like we talked about, then open the app and it's connected. You can do quite a lot with it, and it's surprisingly responsive and natural feeling for focus control over a touchscreen. You can auto calibrate the lens from here. You can set A and B points and run customized automated paths between them, entering the actual time of the path and everything. You can also set more than just A and B points for visual reference of different spots between your A and B points, which is useful if you have things planned out in a shot, for example, with multiple points you want to hit your focus on throughout the scene. You can then even go in and enter the actual units of measurement at different points on your lens, and it will automatically calculate the distance between that and then give you a readout. This is great if you're measuring up and planning your shots and want to see visually the measurements in numbers right on the app. There's more to this app, of course, but generally it's fantastic. The controls are a little bit tricky at first, and that's my only real complaint. You know, certain things have to be double tapped or you have to long hold the button, uh, especially in the case of starting that pre-planned automated A to B movement. You have to long hold it to start the motion, so the movement doesn't actually happen until a second or so after you push the button which could be tricky if you need pinpoint accuracy, like planning out a shot to coincide with the movement of a slider, for example. I'd personally rather just push the button and it immediately starts, which would be easier to coordinate the timing. I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking it. Um, anyway, it hasn't affected my ability to get real great accurate movements like that, uh, and you can even, again, program it in loops. But again, there's a delay between each direction of those loops and you can't customize how long that delay is. So again, it's hard to plan it perfectly with looped motion on a slider, for example, which typically doesn't have that gap in time at either end. But anyway, come on, I'm really sitting here criticizing the mobile app for a $299 wireless follow focus kit. Basically, it's awesome. So my only complaints about this wireless system are just that the wheel on the controller is a little bit small. The controls are slightly limited with no real information display and there's no markings on the wheel or space to leave markings uh, yourself with a marker, for example, for A and B points. If you want to do that manually, instead of limiting the wheel's actual movement by programming them in there as start and stop points, which being able to manually visually see that A and B point would be useful for a scene that has more movement outside of that A and B range, but which at some point does also hit an A point and a B point somewhere within it. Of course, in that app, as we discussed, you could always just set a very wide A to B range and then add additional points in between marked with letters or even physical distances, which I guess technically speaking is even more functionality than I was just talking about. 
But again, do keep in mind that this is basically PD Movie's entry-level kit. And for more advanced users, they do have other versions that solve pretty much all of those issues. In terms of quality and performance, I can only imagine that those would do as good or better than this. And this is already very professional feeling in terms of performance and build quality. At $299, the value for the kit is absolutely there. And compared to something like the popular Tilta Nano, which is around the same price or slightly cheaper depending on sales, I personally would definitely choose this in most cases, especially for the built-in and replaceable batteries, which the Tilta does not have. It's a small detail that could cause a lot of headaches on smaller rigs. Of course, there are pros and cons to both, but I'd still highly recommend this kit from PD Movie. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, if you like this video, please do consider hitting that like button, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.